CBS News White House and senior foreign affairs correspondent Margaret Brennan joins me now from Bridgewater, New Jersey by phone. Hey, Margaret. Um, so in an interview with the Weekly Standard Friday, Bannon said, quote, the Trump presidency that we fought and won for is over. What presidency is he talking about and what would change now? Well, if there was a single person in the administration besides the president who really represented the populist nationalist rhetoric, some of the more um, incendiary rhetoric that you hear the president cite at his rallies in particular, it, it is Steve Bannon himself, because he is someone, as he describes himself, uh, who is to the right of the president. He was very hardline on immigration. He's someone who played a key role in the travel ban, and he actually seemed to really enjoy um, disrupting things and being known for disrupting things. Mm -hmm. And so his frustration and his anger uh, is coming through there in those exit interviews that he is delivering now. Um, he no doubt wants to represent himself as now continuing to fight on behalf of the president. That's what I was told uh, by some of the people who uh, know him well, that this exit was negotiated, that uh, he will not be attacking the president. He will be attacking for the president. So uh, as, as I was told, you know, others better watch out. And he was likely to challenge those who don't share that worldview that America needs to cut itself off rather than uh, integrate further with global markets. This administration has spent the past seven months in a constant cycle of scandal and fallout. Is Bannon's firing just another distraction? Uh, yeah, you don't have to tell me. We're all pretty tired. I got to tell you all the way up. <laughs> um, uh, it, it, it is a distraction in that, um, you know, it, it's another headline. It's another name to add to the list. But in some ways, perhaps it's a useful one because uh, Bannon came to represent so much um, for Democrats, so much for critics of this administration. He really became a lightning rod because of his past rhetoric and his association with, for Bre with Breitbart. So in a week during which the president himself has been uh, has been walking around in some ways uh, as a target because of what he's done to himself with his own rhetoric mm. uh, in the wake of the Charlottesville attack, this is this is now a new focus. This is uh, now a new headline and perhaps relieves uh, it, it's, a, it's a pressure valve um, in some ways. But uh, make no mistake, Steve Bannon is not going quietly as he's making clear in these interviews saying he's going to go to war on behalf of the president. So he's going to still target some of those enemies uh, as he sees them, even though these were co-workers of his just hours ago. Yeah, I know it's exhausting, but um, uh, how many firings do we still expect? Well, we know Chief of Staff John Kelly just came on board about three weeks ago, so he's got a sense of what he wants to do in terms of streamlining. And what they've made clear is that uh, he wants to be able to serve the president, make it easier for him to make decisions, present him with fact-based information, get him access to the best people. And for him, he really has a zero-tolerance policy for some of this infighting that has characterized the past few months. Uh, remember, this is, uh, as, as you know, the president himself sort of enjoys pointing out, this was a hostile takeover of the Republican Party. This is not a, a monolith within the Trump movement. There are a lot of different parties, different factions with different interests. And, uh, you know, that they are all vying for influence. Mm -hmm. uh, what Chief of Staff John Kelly has been tasked with is trying to get them all to pull in the same direction so that the president can actually get some of his agenda done, because this infighting has actually made it difficult for him to accomplish uh, any of the things he promised. Speaking of which, the president uh, traveled to Camp David Friday to meet with military leaders and some of his cabinet members. What more can you tell us about that? So it, it was interesting to see the president really sort of sequestered out there at Camp David with all of his top national security advisors as these headlines uh, were breaking. The uh, president usually likes to weigh in nearly immediately on any news regarding his administration. Uh, he wasn't doing that in part because he was being forced to focus. He had all of the so-called adults in the room. That is a very experienced national security officials. Secretary of Defense James Mattis, uh, Secretary of State Rex Tillerson, who um, himself, you know, drawn some some scrutiny because it, it's not clear how much influence he actually has within the administration. Perhaps that's now been bolstered uh, by uh, his association with these other defense officials. And he had the vice president who came back a day early, a number of these individuals sitting down to try to focus in on what could really be one of the most consequential decisions uh, as a president 
uh, for this young young presidency, which is deciding whether to add to or withdraw U.S. troops from Afghanistan. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, it's a 17-year conflict now with more than 8,000 boots on the ground in these advisory roles. The president has to decide what he's going to do now. Margaret Brennan. Thanks so much, Margaret. Thank you.